Hello and welcome back to the Corico Couch. Now, this time, I'm honoured to have a very special guest, Pauline Grant. Welcome. There you go. <laughs> thank you to our studio audience. That's a, a much better welcome than my last guest. Ah, oh, thank you. It's nice to be here. Looking forward to having a chat with you. Good. So Pauline is our senior protection specialist at Corico. She began her career in financial services back in 2002. And after a short career break with her children, made the decision to specialise in protection advice, which is an area that you feel passionate about. So do you want to Tell me a bit more about your choice of why why protection? Absolutely. So I was a, a protection and mortgage advisor for many years before I uh, had the children. And as you said, a short career break. Uh, and then when I came back in, I felt that I really wanted to specialise in protection. Mm. I felt that it's an area as a mum that was yeah. really, really important to me. Um, to make sure people understood what was available, to make sure they were properly covered. And um, I also felt that sometimes it can be an area that is um, ignored a little bit in the industry. Mm. Maybe uh, if you're focusing on mortgages and protection, protection often felt a bit like a bolt-on, whereas I can just specialise in just the one area, which means I can really get to understand the products, spend more time with my clients because that's all I'm doing, mm. and, and then give them the best advice that I possibly yeah. can. Now, there's lots of myths around the whole protection thing, and we'll we'll try and break some of those down as we go along. But do you want to just explain to the people watching, what when we talk about protection, what, what do we mean? What are we talking about? So fundamentally, protection is is an insurance. And for some reason in this industry, sometimes we do shy away from just using these words. Yeah. We don't talk about pet protection or car protection. We talk about car insurance. And this is fundamentally the same thing, but on a financial level. So it's all about protecting ourselves financially from any um, events that might crop up in the future. So that could be an illness. It could be a serious accident. It could be um, if once somebody passes away. And it's not necessarily about making sure people are better off, but it's about making sure people aren't worse off mm. as a result of those events. So protecting your family, protecting your home, protecting yourself. Protecting your income. Protecting your income. When we're looking at yeah. a mortgage, when we're looking at um, everything we do every day, down to buying food, down to children's activities, that's all underpinned with your salary. So yeah. if your salary stops, everything stops. And um, that's what we're looking at when we're talking about financial protection. So, what are the what are the main types of of policies then that 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 you advise? Yeah. On? So, there's three main areas that I focus on. Um, the first would be around protecting somebody's income, because, as we said, that underpins everything. Yeah. So, when we're looking at income protection, we're talking about things like what would happen if you were off work sick. What would happen if you had an injury or a serious illness that meant you couldn't work for a couple of years or even longer? That's the first area we focus on. We then look at something like critical illness, which is what would happen if it was more serious. Maybe you're diagnosed with something like a cancer. How's that going to impact yourself? How's that going to impact the family? What sort of uh, changes would you have to make financially? Mm. And then worst case scenario, and the one most people have heard about is life cover. Yeah. So what would happen if you passed away? And we try to look at those eventualities and see if there's a need for cover, because not everybody will need all of those policies all of the time. And if there is a need, then obviously it's about understanding what the options available to you are. So typically when people come to you, is there a... That because there, there are a lot of people who might say something like, oh, I'm single, I'm young, I don't need this. Is uh, it, Are there certain groups of people who, who need different things? And, and, and what would those groupings of people be? Yeah, absolutely. And this is where having an advisor really helps mm. because I often see people that have perhaps set up cover themselves previously and have got a policy that doesn't actually do what they need it to do or they've got something they don't need. So, for example, you mentioned there are people that are young, single, no dependents. They still might need to look at some cover. It could be that if they're on their own on the mortgage, they're fully responsible for the mortgage. So if they're not paying it, no one's paying it yeah. fundamentally. Yeah. Um, families... If somebody was to pass away, you're leaving the other person not only um, without their partner, but as a single parent, one income now coming into the household, that's going to have a big impact. 
people that are fit and healthy you mentioned that's another one and people often say to me oh I'm okay I'm fit and healthy <laughs> well, great that's when you take cover <laughs> and um, yeah. the people of all the people I speak to every week the people that want cover the most are the people that can't get it because actually yeah. they've had an illness or point. something like that yeah. so that's when you take the cover not not afterwards. Yeah. So, what what about cost then? Is it because you mentioned there that actually, if you're if you're if you're younger that and and fit, that's the time to take it. Is that is that a cost thing? How how it, does it work? If what what sort of things does does a, a uh, an insurance company look at when they when they're looking at do we cover them, do we not, and how much it costs? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, uh, your age can impact the cost. The younger you are when you take cover the cheaper it is. Uh, as you get older, of course, the risk of a claim is increasing. So therefore, the uh, the premiums are increasing. So that can impact things. People often worry about the cost of cover. Can I afford this cover? Mm. A good advisor will look at what you need and work with you to build a policy that not only meets your needs, but also fits your budget. And that does sometimes mean some compromises here and there around the cover. But actually, a, you can end up with a policy that really does work for you and that you can afford long term. Mm. Um, in terms of other types of things that can impact the cost, your age, your occupation. Right, uh, okay. So uh, somebody mortgage who's... Breaker. Mortgage breaker. Is, yeah, you're <laughs> high okay. Stress, not too, high, high stress, stress, but not too bad. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody like a builder, somebody working at height. Yeah. Um, military, police, those kinds of occupations can have a slightly increased mm. premium. And again, this is where a good broker can can uh, advise you because there are actually policies set up specifically for teachers, NHS, other kind of higher risk occupations yeah. as well that, that a good broker will be able to point you in the direction mm. of. And in terms of the actual cover itself, I mean, there, there are so many things that, that, that are out there. And one of the biggest things that I've had in the past is oh, what's the point of taking this cover you know a lot of a lot of insurance companies don't pay out I think that's a big is that a big myth it's a to bit bust? of a myth it's definitely a myth you, you actually did a presentation to us actually which was brilliant yeah Do you wanna and it really is a myth and that? it's something I think as an industry that actually providers are now starting to really work on mm. so that clients do understand that actually this cover does pay and I've got a couple of stats actually that I did make a note of previous to coming on yeah. today one of the providers we work with last year 2023 97.8% of all of their protection right. claims were paid so less than 3% not paid. I yeah. think that's a pretty good stat. Yeah. Income protection. So again, looking at 2023 figures, one of the providers we work with, 95.4% of their claims were paid on income protection in 2023. So the vast majority are paid. Absolutely. Why, why would they not be? Why would they not be so paid? So if a claim's not paid, it's typically for one of two reasons. One is that the client hasn't met the definition of that particular right, illness. Right, claim, yeah. Or, and, and the sort of usual one is actually that there was something on the application form or something not on the application <laughs> right, form, more okay. to the point, um, yeah. that meant had that have been disclosed, that the insurer perhaps wouldn't have even insured in the first place. So that's another reason. It's, it's good to use an advisor because we can make sure that, that those applications are accurate. Mm. Um, and in the event of a claim, it's going to pay out for you. Mm. Another thing we get, we get is, is obviously people who might be sitting here watching it and think, actually, do you know what? I'm covered at work. I've got death in service benefits. Um, I don't need anything else now. How, mm -hmm. how do you work with, with, with people like that? So we would always take what a client has got as a baseline and mm. build upon it. Um, a protection review is a really good way for clients to just check what they've got anyway. I think a lot of us have sick pay and things like that through work and nobody's ever really looked at it. Yeah. So no one really knows what they've got. Some people are pleasantly surprised, some people not so much, <laughs> depending on how generous <laughs> yeah. their employer is. It's always a good idea, to, as I say, to review it. We might then have a client that comes to us and they've got, say, three months or six months sick pay. Well, that's brilliant. They've already got a baseline in there. But what happens from month seven? Yeah. What happens when that sick pay is exhausted if you're still off work? Um, in the event of death in service, for example, a death in service is typically a multiple of the income designed to replace the lost income. Mm. So actually, that might cover the mortgage, but it might not. And even if it does cover the mortgage, what about just everything else? Everything yeah. else. You know, the kids have still got to eat that month. So um, yeah. it, it, you know, sometimes there are additional options available yeah. and additional policies needed. I like to paint pictures sometimes in terms of what this protection and mm -hmm. uh, really means with some 
some examples and stories. Have you got anything you can share in terms of um, your experience and how how it's really worked? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, and I'm just going to give you a story around the claims, actually, because that is the the common myth, and I think that's something we're definitely up against mm. in the industry. Um, and it is that that providers don't pay out. Well, in this instance, the particular provider we work with, they always come at a claim from a point of how can we pay it yeah. rather than what clients think, which well, is how can we not pay be, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in this particular example, the client had been diagnosed um, with cancer, but her policy had actually ended three weeks before. So three weeks right, before diagnosis. Okay. The, the provider actually looked at it and considered the claim and they did pay the claim. They still pay. And the reason they paid it is the diagnosis process had been happening throughout COVID and the client, uh, the lady right. concerned, had, had struggled to get an appointment. Yeah. And as a result of that, had struggled to get the diagnosis mm. and the provider's take on it was actually, had we not have been in the middle of a pandemic, she'd have been diagnosed within the policy and that claim would have would mm. have been within time. So they paid out on the claim. And I think that's a really nice mm. story. And it just shows that uh, providers aren't necessarily looking to wriggle out yeah. of paying out. Yeah, no, that's a great story. Interestingly, I did have a have a client once on the sort of the the reverse who uh, shortly after the mortgage, his wife phoned me. Sadly, he had an accident um, and and drowned on holiday. She wanted to know if there was any life cover in place. There wasn't. I hadn't done it. But what I had done is documented my conversation with the client mm -hmm. as to, you know, you should have it. You know, you sure you don't need it? And he had come from the position as, no, I'm young and healthy. You know, we haven't got a family yet. Um, and and so that didn't end up paying the mortgage. And they're, they're very difficult conversations yeah, absolutely. to have. Absolutely. Mm. And another another story uh, sort of from, from a few years back, client uh, had a joint mortgage, Mr and Mrs. Mr was the sole income earner. Mm. Mrs was at home looking after their two young children. In between exchange and completion, Mr. died. Uh -huh. I think it's a cycling accident, right. I want to say. The mortgage provider pulled the mortgage because mm. he no longer was alive yeah. and he had the sole income. So they had exchanged and committed to purchase the property, but they had no mortgage to do that. Mm. The life cover had been put in place, though, at exchange of contract. It paid out and she was actually able to complete the purchase. Oh, wow. It, it's really important that it's in place at the right time as well, not just in place. Yeah. How can you help then? What what if if I'm a client and I'm uh you might have approached Corico to, to take out a mortgage and then actually we'll what we do is we'll refer I refer all my clients to you to to have a conversation with them. How do you what what's your process? Okay. So the starting point is always pretty much an informal chat, actually, um, where I can get an understanding of what you've already got in place. So we will ask you to come to the table with um, existing policy details, mm. workplace benefits, as we were talking about. Yeah. But also at that point, I'll also ask about things like any dangerous hobbies. So if you're a base jumper or a skydiver, <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> Now's when you tell me. Um, the same with things like health. I'll do a really yeah. basic health screening. Um, again, it's a little bit bit of a myth that if you've got a serious health issue or have had a serious health issue in the past, you can't get covered. Right. Okay. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes, maybe yeah. not, um, but not necessarily true. But again, an advisor can say to you, look, we can't do it now, but let's talk again in a few months. Mm. Or I did have an example a couple of years ago of a lady who um, had been five years into remission for breast cancer came to me and said, oh, you can't get me cover. And we did get her a policy at standard rates wow. as well, okay. um, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, so, just, sorry, just explain standard rate. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So standard rates is basically um, as quoted. So right. if I say to you, you know, Monty, your policy is going to be £20 a month. I'll take it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> then um, the offer, so once the underwriting has happened, which is when the provider will look at your health all that kind of thing. Standard rates basically means you're as as expected the quote to be. Sometimes providers might increase the rates a little bit. It could be due to a health problem. Mm. Uh, it could be due to sports or activities that right. you take part in, um, occupation or um, BMI. So all sorts of reasons that they right. may increase the premium. Okay. And, uh, and so 
they come to you, have a have an initial chat. Yeah, so it's an initial chat. So I'll find out a little bit more about what's in place. So we'll talk through the gaps and see what's important and what's not important. Mm. And as I said earlier, not all policies will be suitable for all clients. Yeah. Somebody who's single with no dependents and couldn't care less where the property goes if they pass away might not want life cover. Yeah. But they could be more interested in something like income protection if it's just them paying the mortgage. Mm. So we'll find out what's important to you. We'll find out a little bit about your health and lifestyle and that sort of thing. That's the first call. What I then do is go away, do some research, look at the types of policies that might be suitable for you, look at lots of different budget options. So I do tend to, when I send over a client's options by email, I'll send a few different price points as well because it's really important we get that budget right for people. Mm -hmm. And then we have a second call just to run through the options, answer the questions um, and slide the figures around in all honesty. So it might be that you say to me, yeah, definitely like the idea of the income protection, but I don't need £4,000 a month cover. How much would the premium be for 3000 Yeah. And we slide the figures around until we end up with a policy that meets your needs and, um, and is yeah. in budget. Yeah. And what about things like drinking, smoking, okay. recreational drug use? Is that is that something that comes up and how how honest do you it find people generally? It does come up generally? and it's really important people are honest because <laughs> that's as coming back to talking about yeah. claims. Um, and if everything they it's tell you so is important. confidential. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So, um, I know, in fact, I had a really interesting question um, last week from a mortgage broker who said to me, oh, client's got a serious health problem, doesn't want to speak to you because she's worried the mortgage company won't lend right okay. and um and i said well actually the mortgage company don't even know what the conversation is we've had they don't yeah. know they don't see the cover the cover isn't for the mortgage company they actually don't care um it's for you the protection or the financial mm. protection is for you the individual not the mortgage mm. company so yeah it's all completely confidential um smoking does increase premiums a little bit excess drinking might do as well mm. actually recreational drug use Again, um, this is where an advisor is really helpful because some providers won't offer cover, and that but there are providers that will. Mm. So again, it's it's really important to speak to someone who knows which yeah. providers are good for what outcomes for you. So okay, that that that's really interesting actually. And um, is is there any any other tips you can give people who are who are potentially looking at this as to how do how do they how should they be thinking about protecting themselves? I think the top tip I would always give for protection is to start the process early. Mm. Um, we will always offer clients a protection review as soon as they've submitted their mortgage application. And I think for some clients, they think, oh, I'll do that later, I'll do that later. Well, in the house buying process, things don't get less stressful the closer to exchange you get. They typically get more stressful the closer yeah. to exchange yeah. you get. Um, so by getting it sorted early, there's a real benefit there. It also helps with budgeting. If you know what the protection is going to cost now, you can still sort of think about the budget for once you move into the property rather than that being another expense you hadn't really factored in. Mm. And um, also, should there be any underwriting requirements? So, for example, if a provider needs information about a health condition from your GP, that can take weeks if not months, to come back from the GP. Right. So it means that your policy is ready for exchange rather than rather than waiting. So I would always say get it sorted sooner rather than later. There you go. Get it sorted sooner rather than later. Okay, well, thank you very much, Pauline. That's been magnificent. Thanks and, for having uh, me. And yeah, I've learned a lot today, actually. Uh, thank you very much. Please join me again next time to see who is next on the Coraco Couch. <laughs>